I'm Malcolm Burrows, Principal of Dundas Lawyers. Dundas Lawyers is an award-winning corporate, technology and intellectual property law firm that also passionately litigates in these areas of practice. Negotiating and documenting commercial contracts can be a complex activity. We frequently have to deal with implications of many common errors in commercial contracts, sometimes after it's too late. For this reason, we've put together our top seven mistakes that we see in commercial contracts. Number one, failing to identify the correct party you're contracting with. When contracting with a company, Section 153 of the Corporations Act requires the company's name and its ACN to appear on, the, on, a, on a public document. Further, consideration must be given to whether or not the entity you're actually contracting with is the company itself or a trading trust, whereby the company is merely acting as trustee. Moreover, if you're contracting with a joint venture partner, are they authorised to bind the joint venture? These sorts of complexities can make it easy to, to contract with the wrong party. The Australian Business Register is an invaluable tool that provides a free search and allows you to enter an ABN, ACN or entity name and obtain some basic information to assist you to ensure you're, you're contracting with the right party. Number two, relying on the wrong template from the internet. Whilst in the right circumstances, these templates might be a valuable tool and that saves time and money, all too often the contract selected is not suitable for the organisation's specific purpose. It may be slanted towards the other party or maybe even in the wrong jurisdiction. Most lawyers will be able to pick up these, identify, quickly uh, identify these issues before it's too late. Number three, losing control of the contract. The general rule we consider is that if it's your deal, you should control the contract. In other words, your deal, your contract. Too often, entrepreneurs and business people who put together a commercial arrangement mistakenly believe that it's cheaper to let the other side, as we refer to them, provide you with their contract drawn up by their lawyer. Rest assured, if the other party's lawyer drafts the contract, they will not be acting in your best interests. So if you don't control the contract, there's a fair chance it will end up costing you more and it will actually be a false economy to think that you will be relying on the other side's lawyer. Number four, including onerous clauses. The temptation often exists to include stringent obligations on the other party where one party's lawyer is responsible for drafting the contract. These sorts of act obligations we consider add to the transaction cost and in the end neither party really benefits. Minimising transaction costs improves mutual benefits and creates longer, more beneficial business relationships. Often one party's lawyer includes clauses that no lawyer would recommend their client sign, thinking that it's in their client's best interests to include these clauses to protect their rights. We have a different view. So, but having these clauses, sorts of clauses removed can take be problematic and cost time and money. Number five. Lack of contractual precision in commercial contracts. Contracts serve a greater purpose than just holding each party liable for the obligations they contain. They define the rights and obligations of each of the parties and document a business relationship. A lack of precision not only increases the cost of enforcing a contract, if it can be enforced, but also increases the probability of having it enforced in the first place. Precision in contracting ensures the parties have the same understanding and expectations which also leads to longer and more beneficial business relationships. Number six, violating the doctrine of no surprises. Commercial contracts are often negotiated by business people and subsequently drafted by lawyers. Unfortunately, the first version of a contract is not always what the parties anticipated, as the lawyer that drafted it, in thinking that they're acting in their client's best interests, has added a lot of material and sometimes new obligations which are a surprise. We, we refer to this as breaching the doctrine of no surprises. Term sheets can be used to broadly define the commercial terms of a proposed agreement and if passed between all parties to the contract, including their lawyers, to, it can improve communications, save time and money and limit surprises. Number seven, agreeing to agree. Agreements to agree are not enforceable. At best, they create an obligation to act reasonably and in good faith towards defining the terms and concluding a contract. Agreements to agree are missing the essential element of all contracts. 
which is an intention to create legal binding relations. For these reasons, agreements to agree in larger commercial contracts about certain elements should be avoided. So if you're looking for a commercial savvy lawyer to assist you in drafting the com a commercial contract, advise you on your, opera, on your options in regard to a commercial dispute, don't hesitate to contact me on 3221 0013 for an obligation-free and confidential discussion. Thanks for watching this video.